If I had to pick one of these based on the engine alone, my money's on the... Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. This Toro Super Recycler is from 1999 and can usually be found for a couple hundred dollars on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. And this is a brand new 2023 Toro Super Recycler. Let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison and see how each of them stack up. Let's start with the one thing that sets these mowers apart from any other mowers the deck. Both of these mowers have an aluminum deck which really allows them to withstand the test of time. Each deck has a set of kickers underneath to help with mulching. The kickers help re-divert the clippings back into the blade so that way they can be recycled back into your lawn. Both mowers can be configured to mulch, bag, and even side discharge. Both mowers do an outstanding job mulching up the clippings, but I will say that knowing this mower after using it many, many years, the older model delivers a cleaner, better cut. Striping is also better thanks to the rounded rear drag flap. The drag flap on the newer model gets caught up underneath the deck constantly. <laughs> Seriously, it's pretty frustrating. And to keep this video from getting frustrated with the YouTube algorithm, would you mind taking a super quick second to hit that like button? Thank you. Sitting up on top of these decks are two similar yet very different engines. Both are made by Briggs and Stratton and both have 190 cc's. From a time long ago they used to put horsepower ratings on the engines. Look! Six horsepower! Six horsepower is plenty of power. These mowers have two very different carburetors. The old style carburetors are metal. Super easy to clean and maintain. I've tuned many of these up in the past. In fact I did a tune up video on this exact mower and I'll have that video linked down below in the description. Little shot of carb cleaner and once they're clean they'll run another 100,000 miles. The new Super Recycler carburetor is plastic. I've said this before, I'll take metal over plastic any day and this plastic carburetor is riddled with problems. The engine likes to sputter and there's lots of videos on YouTube on this. I would seriously be concerned using carburetor cleaner on that. This mower was able to survive all those years on ethanol fuel or Ethanol, as some like to call it. I kind of like that name, Ethanol, as well as ethanol free fuel for the last decade or so. And here it is still running today. If you run ethanol fuel in this engine, you are asking for trouble with that carburetor. But I will say this, when hitting tall grass, the old engine would bog down a little bit. It would recover fast, but the new model barely bogs down at all. I'm not kidding. It takes a lot to slow that thing down. That older Briggs and Stratton engine has survived the test of time. It was used residentially, then commercially, and then used residentially every single year since, and it's still running. If I had to pick one of these based on the engine alone, my money's on the older Briggs and Stratton engine. Based on the build quality of the current Briggs and Stratton engines, it's highly unlikely that this engine would be able to compete with that engine nowadays. Both have, or should I say, have had an electric starter. The electric start failed on this model after the first several years. That's typically about how long I see them last anyways. Some out there may say differently, but that's what I've seen in the past. On the newer models, it's usually one to three pulls and it starts right up for you. On the older model, prime it three times, pull the rope, and bang, it's starting right up for you on the first pull. While it was nice to have, you didn't even really need the electric start. Up top on the older model is something you really don't see much more on newer models today, a throttle control. Newer models and just about any other new model out there today have one throttle speed, high speed. The throttle control on this older model is a nice feature to have. I actually used to use that throttle control all the time when customers would come out of their house to talk to me really quick. I would throttle it down, have a quick chat with them, and then as soon as they left, brrr, revved it right back up. Now here's a sign that this older model has been used a lot. The older model has been hand pulled so many times that the hole that the rope actually comes out of is worn. It's kind of sharp and it rips up the rope. So in order to avoid that rope from tearing, what I decided to do was move that rope to the other side so that way you could pull it without the rope tearing. Fuel efficiency. From my experience, I was able to mow about one and a half yards with each mower. So they're pretty similar here. Moving on, let's have a look at the drive system. The newer model has the personal pace drive system, which has been around for about the last two decades. I do like the personal pace, and it is nice how the harder you push down, the faster it'll go. But there is a bit of inconsistency with the personal pace. On just one pass down your yard, your mowing speed could actually vary greatly, especially going up and down hills. If you go too fast, this could ultimately affect the deck suction going on underneath the deck and hinder your overall cut quality. The old model has a simple one bale drive system. You pull it up about halfway, the mower will run. If you pull it up all the way, the mower will drive forward. If you let it down halfway, the mower will stop its traction. If you let go all the way, the mower will shut off. And again, one of my favorite things to do on these kinds of mowers is put a cheat strap on so that way you can Avoid that learning curve and just start and stop the drive system whenever you need to like that. When you need to shut it off, all you do is simply pull the string down and let go. Once you lock it in gear, you're moving at a consistent speed 
every single pass. Gear one is slow, two is medium, and three is fast. Three is mainly for transporting the unit around, and two will give you a nice quality cut. The older transmissions are built better as well. Better gears that last and last. Can't say that about many new mowers nowadays. Now let's talk wheels. The new Super Recycler wheels have a deep grippy tread, and there's larger wheels in the back that make the unit easier to steer. The older model has plastic wheels. Wah, wah. I will say this though, the wheels on this older unit have only been replaced once after all these years of use. That's some pretty hard plastic. Check this out. Here on the back wheels, there's grease points. You can lubricate the wheel gears to prolong the life of the drive system. This isn't even a thought on newer models. Height adjusters, hard to say who the winner would be here. The old model has a lever with a pin that locks into the deck. The newer models have a lever and plate that bolt onto the deck. Both do an equally good job holding their height. Now the handlebars. Little thinner bars on the old model, thicker bars on the new one. And by tipping the handlebars up on the new model, you can actually put the mower into the stow position. The newer model also has rubber shock absorbers to absorb the bumps as you're passing across your lawn. All of these are nice features to have on the new model. Model. But the older model has three height adjustment settings compared to the new model, which only has two. Granted, this one's held on by zip ties here on each end, but hey, you do what you gotta do. On top of that, nice rounded corners here on the top, which make the unit easier to turn along a fence or a wall. And check this out, a metal dashboard, making the upper half of the handlebar system more sturdy. And I have commented on this a lot on the newer Toro Super Recycler, the massive personal pace assembly that looks more like a baby stroller handle than anything. Toro, this thing's gotta go. You gotta shrink it down. Things were clearly built differently at Toro back in the day, and better. Back in the 90s when this unit came out, it was about $600 at the time and was a level just below commercial grade. Basically a really high-end homeowner model. It was a different era back then. Space Jam, Super Soakers, and Super Recyclers that were actually built to last. Do I like the new Toro Super Recycler? Yes, it cuts great. It's able to handle tall grass and it's super easy to handle. But when you compare it to what they used to have and the longevity of the older models, well, there is no comparison. If you're interested in more information on the new Toro Super Recycler, I actually did an unboxing as well as a full review. I'll have those videos linked down below in the description for you. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the garage.